If you more people to show up, then we can be turning in our Bibles to Philippians chapter 2. Is your camera on? It is. It oh, is. Are you sure? I'm going to double check. It's a roller. Feel free to ask that every week. Are you sure? <laughs> Preaching on Wednesday, Father, that we can have a victorious life. And Lord, you help us to, to hold to this word, and you help us to uh, spread your word. Please, this morning. Father, as I heard this morning, just the, the simple truth that we would be more like you yes. and less like ourselves. We thank you and we love you in your name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Hey, pray again. I'll raise my head up. There's three more people. Amen. Good to see you all. All right, Philippians chapter 2. Pray for me this morning as I'm teaching. I always want that. You know that. Uh, but I have a real, a much, I don't know, a greater burden this morning. Um, Philippians chapter 2. 1 through 8, actually, but in particular, the heart of Philippians chapter 2 is what we're going to be focusing on more this morning, and that's the verse number 3 and 4. Uh, it's basically what our heart, what our mind, what our life looks like if we are conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And if we miss this right here, folks, what's it all about? I mean, if we're not going to have the mind of Christ and the heart of God, what is this all about? Let's go home. Amen. I'm really not into religious games. Amen. I'm not here just to be religious. We're here to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. That's what our that's what the cross of Calvary is all about. That's what it's all about, period, is being conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is such a vitally, vitally important chapter. Uh, we looked at Philippians chapter 1. Being confident of this very thing. I, I was pondering on that. And at the importance of that this morning is like... You know, there's not too many verses that start out like that. Being confident of this very thing. There's just not many verses that start out like that. He says, Be confident of this very thing, that he which hath been done a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I want you to think about that verse and what it means to you. It means that you are everything to God. It means that He is performing that work all your waking hours of every day of your life. It means God is about you. Hello. <laughs> Not the masses. He's about you personally, individually. He's working every day to conform you to the image of Christ. Being confident of this very thing, when he, he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it. Absolutely. We've got no reason not to be confident of this very thing. Amen. Man, that ought to help you. That ought to encourage you. And, and folks, and because of that, I'll say it one more time. Stop beating yourself down. Stop looking on yourself in, a, in, in a, such a negative way. That's not honoring to God. That does not come from the Holy Spirit. You do not find that in the Word of God. There's only one source for that. Flesh. Amen. It's the old man. It's not the new man. The new man never had that thought ever because the new man is Christ in you the hope of glory, right? I'm going to approach this from just a little different angle this morning. Look with me at Philippians chapter 2. Good morning, folks. Good to have all of y'all. Philippians chapter 2 and um, verse number 3. This is, I think this is where we left off last week. 
It says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. He had just given us two wonderful verses in, in verse number one and verse number two about being like-minded, about having one mind, um, uh, about having the same love one for another as brethren, fully in one accord, in total harmony, in fellowship with, with the saints of God through the Holy Spirit and on and on. Two wonderful verses. Then he, just like he completely changes gears and, and says this, he says, uh, let nothing be done through stuff. It's, you know what that shouting? That shouting, but don't walk in the, in the flesh. Because the first two verses, you can only accomplish that if you're walking in the Spirit. And then he says, but don't walk in the flesh. Let us not. That means let us not choose to, to walk in the flesh and to walk in vain glory. And, and if you remember correctly last week, we looked at... Um, Let's see, do I want? I don't want to look at that right now. We looked at. I think we'll go back and look at that again in Romans. No, in Galatians five, but not right now. Uh, loneliness of mind. Now, what did we say? Loneliness of mind was. It's basically complete humility. Spirit produced humility. Loneliness of mind. And, and uh, good morning, Terry. That was great. What I, want, what I want us to look at this morning in verse seven and eight. It's four expressions of humility in these verses that we find in Christ's life. And if we're going to bear the image of Christ and be conformed to the image of Christ, we must have these four expressions of humility in our life. It's not optional. And if you don't plan on having these, you don't want these, don't plan on being conformed to the image of Christ. And don't plan on fulfilling God's plan that He preordained before the foundation of the world, which was for us to be conformed to the image of Christ. In other words, it's, it's a sham. Anything you do from there, if you don't want that, you're living a sham. Amen? I'm living a sham. This is, what it's, this is the heart of it. This is the mind of Christ. This is the life of Christ. And that's what we should be living Amen? To the glory of God. So the first one I want us to look at, and uh, look at me, we're going to find these four, I think I said in verse 3 and 4, it's actually in verse 7 and 8. Look at verse number 7. First of all, I want you to look at this. But made himself of no reputation. Now when I read these, I want you to think about you. And I want you to think about how you think. And what's in your mind? What's in your heart? I want you to think about what you, your goals and ambitions, what are your desires? And if you're walking in the flesh, it's only logical to want to make yourself a reputation. Because pride is what drives the flesh. And so it makes sense. If I'm going to walk in the flesh, I want to be somebody. I want to look like somebody. I want to act like somebody. I want to be somebody. I want people to look up to me. That's the nature of the flesh. So I mean, that's just natural, right? But we're not natural. We found out Wednesday night. We're supernatural, amen? We are supernatural new men. The new man in the Lord Jesus Christ. So he made himself of no reputation. And let me say this. He was not controlled by others' opinions of himself. We get, folks, so many people, especially young teenagers, it's almost natural that they just are so controlled by the opinion of others. And it's so damaging. It's, it's so damning if you come right down to it. it but it's so powerful. Because we want to be liked by other people. We don't want to be the outsider. We don't want to be the reject. We don't want to be liked. We want to be accepted by folk. Amen? You've got to learn if you're going to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Your greatest desire in this life is to be accepted by the Father and the Son. Now, if you don't accept me, 
I'm sorry, I'll still love you, but I'm going to live in such a way that I'm accepted by my Father and by the one that died on the cross for me. Amen. I care about other people's opinions. I really do. But my care for your opinion is I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to have a detrimental effect on you in any way to push you away from the incredible, wonderful, abundant life through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I, everything I do, everything I say, I want it to draw you to Jesus Christ. So he he desired he didn't desire reputation, did he? I don't desire reputation. And yet, you know what? I pray and I ask the Lord, and I, I don't know what his, his his plans are for me in the future. I'm not one that says, God, I want to do great things for you. I think we wear that out. You know what I mean? I just want to do what my gift and my calling and how God plans me to use that in the church of Jesus Christ. Amen? It'll be great to Him. Okay, if I do that. But I'm not, I don't care about, I don't want a name among men. And yet, I pray, I pray, Lord, open up more doors. Open up more opportunities. I went to the headquarters of Rock of Ages Prison Ministry Thursday and met an old, old friend I used to travel with. It's amazing to see God do it. I mean, I met the president, the vice president, and some other key men, and uh, gave them my book, and, and got. I mean, God just opened the doors, and I think it's going to be great for walking in the spirit ministries, amen, for as far as the future goes. I don't go around trying to do stuff like that. God opens the doors, amen. I'm not looking for a reputation. I'm not looking for a name. I like being the little guy in the shadows. David Padgett, who? Mm -hmm. Amen, that's what I like. No, we're not looking for a reputation. He was not controlled by others' opinions of himself. He was not seeking fame. He could have had it. He, he could have come on the scene with legions of angels. Amen. And, and brilliance of, of glory and a light that ever shined and everybody fell and couldn't stand it. And he could have come on the scene like that, couldn't he have? Dressed as a king with a crown with a robe. He could have come on the scene. Jesus was never seeking fame, was he? Should we? Should we? No, no. That, that's not loneliness of mind, is it? That's not complete humility, is it? No, that, that's the essence of pride. So he was not seeking fame or to be held in high esteem in the eyes of others. <laughs> and folks, you know what? We will experience that occasionally. We get into certain circumstances, and we get into circumstances once in a while where somebody wants to pat us on the back and they want to honor us, and maybe rightly so, because of things we've accomplished. Be careful how you handle that. Handle it in the spirit, and it'll humble you. You handle it in the flesh, and it'll get you puffed up, and get you full of pride, and get you out of fellowship with God. So that's number one. Four expressions of humility in Christ's life. He made himself with no reputation. Number two. It says here in verse number seven, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Now, think, of, think about you now, amen. I want, I want you to think about these things in your life. He took upon himself the, the form. Let, let, me, let me maybe just illustrate it like this. <laughs> you know what I am? I'm a Sunday school teacher, but you know what I am? I, I do a lot of things. I wear a lot of hats. But one of the things that I am, are you ready for this? I'm a janitor. <laughs> I clean toilets. When I was in the military, I went straight to the top. I, I hadn't been there two, three days, and they made me a captain. They, they told me I was the captain of the, of the latrine. <laughs> and it was my job. You know how many soldiers we had in that barracks? And it was my job to make sure there was no tangles and no sprinkles on anything. Amen? It, it's spotless. 
Everything in there stays spotlessly clean. You know what? I ate it up. I, I took it with honor. I've always loved the work anyway. And I, I committed that it was going to be the cleanest bathroom anywhere. Mm -hmm. One guy came from another company across the way and tried to steal my toilet paper one day. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, that had been like trying to steal my armor, my tank, my gun. Amen. I, mean, I was a soldier. Man, I and uh, I mean, I hit him and knocked him cuckoo, and we were fighting all over the stairs, and and, and I mean, we were just maybe not over a roll of toilet because he was stealing my toilet paper. But that was my duty. Good job. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the door opened right where we were fighting, and here's my drill sergeant with a hat on there. I won't tell you the rest of the story. <laughs> but anyway, I was doing my duty, amen. But you know what? I, I was a, a, a commode cleaner. I, mean, I am one now. I'm a janitor at our company business. My wife is too. You know what? I'm listening. When I say that, my flesh does not like me saying that. I can feel it inside. My flesh is saying, don't, don't go there. You don't have to tell people that. My flesh doesn't like that. But it's good for my spirit. Amen. <laughs> he took upon himself the form or the nature and character. Not just the form, but the nature and the character of a servant. I could just take on the form of a janitor. Not like it the whole time I'm doing it. Fast as I can, get out of there as fast as I can. No. No, to please my Lord, I, I don't just take on the form. I do it wholeheartedly. I take on the nature, the character of a janitor. I'm not trying to act like I'm something else when I'm being a janitor. Amen? I don't do it with a suit and tie on and carry my Bible. I mean, I don't try to act like something. I am a janitor. That's what I am. Folks, we need to live like that. No pretense. Come on. It's an honorable thing. It really is. To be a servant. What a blessing. And it helps me be, in little ways it helps me be a servant to Jesus Christ. What's the preacher asked you to do that? I mean, you preach in his church and you, you teach something and he asked you to do it? Well, so what? I gotta let my preacher know that I don't care what you ask me to do, I will do it. And it and, and the Lord certainly knows that's my heart and my attitude. Hey, I tell people all the time, I'm your servant. I'm at your beck and call. I love the saints. Call me at 2 in the morning. I don't care. If you've got a need, you're not going to impose upon me. That's my duty. It's my life. It's my joy. It's what I am. It's a servant. Amen. And even saying all that, I'm not near where I should be, but hey, I'm working in that direction again. I'm growing in that direction. But you know what? It's so Christ-like, isn't it? If, if, nothing, if for no other reason, that's why I'm going to be an incredibly wonderful servant. It's just like my Lord. He made himself with no reputation. He took on him the form of a servant. You know what a servant has? You think of a bond slave in the Old Testament? Nothing. Both had nothing. They, they, they were, oh, they had very little. I mean, hardly a place to sleep. They, but they had nothing in the way of this world's goods. Did you know some, uh, I, I used to try to buy just the right things and get just the right things and stretch my budget to the limit so I could have this because everybody else had it. And not just anyone. I wanted the one that had a name brand on it. And I wanted this and I wanted that. But you know what? Honestly, it was part of my image. It, it was part of who I am. You know, if that's who you are and that's really what makes you up, you're, it's pitiful really. It's that sad, isn't it? A servant has nothing. And yet, if you serve with a, a wholeheartedly for the Lord Jesus Christ. It, it, hello! You can be the happiest guy in the world, amen? You can be full of joy. But you know 
Because what, what you have is not where you get your fulfillment. It's not where you get your character. It's not, it's not where you, who you are. Amen. I that's not, it, you're not concerned about image. Wearing all the designer brands. Or driving this kind of truck. Or this kind of truck. Folks, that, 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 that has nothing to do with us. Amen. As new creatures in Christ. As being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. What he had materialistically had nothing to do with the man of character that he was, the Lord Jesus Christ. Did he not say he had nothing? Did he not say he didn't even have a place to put his head hardly to sleep? And that had nothing to do with who he was and, and his incredible, wonderful character. I don't want it to have anything to do at all with who I am. And my godly, Christ-like character. I took a tough beating this week. My Dodge Ram broke down. $2,500 to fix it. That hurt terribly. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to cry out here. But anyway, I didn't want that Dodge Ram to start with. I told my wife, I said, it's got too many bells and whistles, too many things to break down. Oh, honey, what about the electric seats in the wintertime? Mm. What about that heated steering wheel in the wintertime? And, of course, if my baby wanted it, I was going to do everything I could do to get it for her. And, and so I said, no problem, we'll get it. But you know what, folks? When I got it, people started saying, ooh, look what you're driving. See, that's one reason that I didn't want it. I knew that was coming. And it's okay. I understand why people do stuff like that. But I don't want the recognition or whatever it brings. Oh, well, you really stepped up. I don't want to hear stuff like that. Amen? It's a, it's a piece of metal. I mean, I, thank God for it. Plastic. More plastic than metal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are old, that's all the terminology. When I was there. All right. You took upon yourself the form of a servant. And you know what? Taking on the form of a servant, it tells me he had no concern for the concept of his position. You know what, guys? Thank God for what God does in your life. Thank God for the job He gives you. If you're building up business and you're an entrepreneur, thank God for the way He's building your business. He is just... It's, it's astonishing how God has used my three boys to build a business. And yet, you know what? And it's amazing to me. It may happen. And my boys are certainly not perfect. But I, I mean, I don't think I have ever one time heard one of my boys brag about they built, the way they built that business. Because we that business was built on prayer and trusting God from the day we started. I, I hope and pray they walk in the fear of God. And, and I... Brother, I mean, I would be, I'd be almost scared to start bragging about how we built that business. Because I know God's listening. He's watching. And He knows all the prayer we put into it. And the miraculous answer to prayer. Two or three times we were ready to go under. We were on the day where if the, if the, if the loan officer at the bank did not make a decision in our favor, we were going under. And it did not, I mean, it, it was against us. Everything was against us. Dad, the bank voted in our favor. I mean, I mean, probably at least twice, if not three times, since we've been in the business. Isn't that great? And we can, you know, wow, we built a multi-million dollar business. Well, I didn't, my sons. I don't, you won't ever hear my boys say that. Amen. Thank God for that mm -hmm. spirit. That spirit of, of resting completely in the Lord, not about position. All right, so he took upon himself the form of number three. And it says he made himself of no reputation. He took upon him the form of a servant. And this is quite an amazing miracle. And was made in the likeness of men. <laughs> I mean, to me that is so incredible that the creator of heaven and earth and all the universe, the creator of man would someday come down to this same earth He created and Himself take off His robes of, 
glory and put on the likeness of the very men that he created. I, I mean, that, that just puts goose pimples on my arms. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for that. But he was made in the likeness of men. There again, he desired no recognition when he came. I mean, look at the way he was born in the stable, etc., etc. He desired no recognition when he came onto the scene. He, he had, had no, he, he had, even though he was the Lord of creation, and he had every right. If anybody's had a right, he had every right to come in all his glory as the Lord of creation. Yet that was not his desire. Wow. He desired no recognition as the Lord of creation. Or how about as the God of the universe? He had no desire for anybody to glory in him as the God of the universe. Not at this time. And you know what? That is so. Did you know men desire to be supermen? I mean, look at, look at the movies. Look at everything you see. It's all about man becoming a superhero. Really becoming supernatural without God. Amen. That's just the heart of my nature, my old nature. And you know how I know it? You know when I evidence it the most, sister? When I go to sleep. In my dreams. <laughs> I'm always a superhero in my dreams. It's all oh man, it's, it's embarrassing when I wake up to think about it. I mean, the insane things I did in my dreams is literally supernatural. I was loved by the universe. I said, you had time. <laughs> but that's a natural man, isn't it? That, that's what, that's just the nature of the natural man. <laughs> oh, mercy. He didn't want to be a superman. Jesus did not want to be a superhuman. Amen. He just wanted to be a man. Wow. Let us think that same way. Amen. Alright, number four. And the final one. Verse eight. And he and being found in fashion as a man. What did he do? He humbled himself. I thought he'd already done that. I thought he did a pretty good job already. <laughs> he humbled himself. And this is so critical. And this is so vital. This is where not just having the mind of Christ, not just having the heart of God and the heart of Christ, but this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where our life and our living becomes Christ-like. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, now notice, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So I see number four, he humbled himself unto the death of the cross. And I would have to say, in my way of thinking, this is the ultimate manifestation, the ultimate expression of humility. Because if we love one thing, it's our life. The fact that we wake up in the morning and look at the sun, sunrise, amen? The fact that we, we move and have our being, and we, I mean, we don't want to lose that thing, amen? We'll do anything to preserve that life, that breathing, that heartbeat. And I said always, in all, in all four of these, think of yourself. You want the same manifestation in you if you truly want to bear the image and be conformed to the image of Christ. You want to have all four of these in your life as well. And so, what does that tell me? Number four was he humbled himself until the death of the cross. Brother, that tells me I've got to humble myself unto the death of the cross. Now, we're not talking about physical death. Although I should be willing to humble myself unto physical death for him as well. And I'm so sad to say many believers around the globe today will humble themselves 
unto death for the Lord Jesus Christ and His name and His cause. That breaks my heart. I can't understand it. The last few days it's been on my heart. I've just been thinking about my brothers and sisters in Christ that are dying for the faith in the Ukraine. Is Russia slaughtering them? And folks, they're slaughtering the just and the unjust. Amen. I had the most incredible three hours that I've had in many, 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 many days and months. Thursday, when I went over to Rock of Ages. I met with a man that I used to travel with in the Ukraine. I went to the Ukraine five times, traveled all over the country. He barely escaped with his wife and his two children. He was in Kiev, lived in Kiev. And all of a sudden, bombs are landing all around him. Get the kids, get the car. Barely got out with absolutely nothing but the clothes on his back, a few blankets or, or something or another put in the car. And, the, and for three solid hours, I sat there just dumbfounded and stunned as he told me about the scenes he saw and the, and the massive slaughter. And, and I just, it just weakened me all over. And I, it just, <laughs> but you know what? I hate to say it. It's, it's that's gone on since the beginning of time just about and it will continue to go on and we so you know what he said now listen folks he said i never thought it would be us we i mean they live in the capital beautiful beautiful wealthy city live in nice apartments he says we knew it was going on but we never dreamed it would come to us See, that's where Americans are. Yeah. We've never dreamed it couldn't come here. <laughs> and let's hope it doesn't. You better pray. But if it does come, folks, we may have to express the ultimate expression of humility. And we may have to lay down our life for the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But that's not what I'm talking about right here. He humbled himself under the death of the cross. We are to humble ourselves unto the death of our cross. We are to take up our cross of crucifixion and follow the Lord Jesus Christ all the days of our life. In order for that to happen, we must be willing to let the old man die. And that is the crucifixion, by the way. Giving yourself a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your, <laughs> it's just your reasonable service, mm -hmm. considering what Christ did for you, and considering that is God's design purpose. That's why we're, that's His design purpose before the foundation of the world. If you're going to be a believer, is to be conformed to the image of Jesus. You'll never be conformed to the image of Jesus if you don't let the old man die. Amen and live in the new man, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Paul said, I always, that was a verse I always couldn't stand for years. Because teachers and preachers would say, Paul said, I die daily. You should die daily. I got to where I hated hearing it. Because nobody ever told us how to die daily. And it was one of those verses I just didn't care if I ever heard again. Because I didn't know how to do it. Oh, I quit this a little bit. Or I quit that a little bit. Or I slack up on this a little bit. It never gave me much in the way of victory. Or it certainly couldn't consider the old day of it did by any means. And now I just, that verse, I love it, I love it. Because I understand now how you die daily. I understand how you put the old man to death at 1 John 1, 9, blood gate. I understand how that we die daily. Did you know that if you choose to walk in the Spirit, you're choosing to put on the new man. 
And you are choosing to put off the old man. Just like God, Jesus, or the Word said in Ephesians 4.24. Why didn't somebody just teach me that simple principle when I was a young Christian? I tell you, I've come to the point where I'm convinced that I'm going to start writing on it and sending it all over everywhere. That if you call your discipleship program a discipleship program and you don't teach your young converts how to walk in the Spirit and not to walk in the flesh, then it is so insanely inadequate and is destined to fail. Because you probably taught them how to be great moralists. You, I mean, every, I don't mean nobody intends it. Nobody's, I'm not throwing it off. No, it's just we haven't been taught. And it angers me in my soul. It frustrates me in my soul. And I want to start encouraging people as many as I can to have discipleship programs that begins with teaching them well, I preached on Wednesday night with the new birth, what it really is all about. And the moment you're born, you're full of the Holy Spirit. You're a new creature in Christ. It is the Spirit of Christ from that moment plans, from the moment you become a new baby spiritually, born again, the Bible calls it. His plan, His design, is that you walk in the Spirit. Because He filled you with the Holy Spirit. He sealed you with the Holy Spirit. You've got it all, all that you need from that moment forward. And yet, that, I've never seen that in any discipleship programs. And I'm certainly not saying I've seen them all. But it needs to be in there. So He humbled Himself into the death of the cross. The ultimate expression of humility. Now look with me at verse number 9. I, 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 I never saw this till this morning when I was studying. Wherefore God also <laughs> hath highly... What does it say? <laughs> Wherefore God hath highly exalted Him. And I have been... My, I feel, as I study down through this, I'm thinking, okay, this needs to be me. 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 And, and God told me this morning when I was reading that, He said, now, go to the next verse. This will be you if you let those things be you. Look with me. It, notice He says, Wherefore God, hath, or God also hath highly exalted Him. Now listen. And given Him a name. <laughs> God gave Him a reputation. He was not looking for that reputation, folks. He was not living, striving for that. God gave him a name among men. And I want to tell you something. If you will practice these principles, and if you'll put these principles into effect, let God put these mm -hmm. principles into effect in your life. I'm here to tell you right now, God <coughs> will give you a name among the brethren. And you know what? I want that name because it'll further my ministry He's given me. And it has. I mean, I, I stand amazed that people call me for counsel and call me for advice. Even preachers, I'm like... And sometimes it just overwhelms me. And I say, baby, what, how, I mean, what am I doing here? You know why? Because I start looking at me. And I just have to back away from it and say, I'm doing what God has designed me to do. Does it, I, at times I want to run from it. Mm -hmm. It's like more than I can bear or hand. No. Yeah, that's the flesh! <laughs> but I'm going to do what God has designed me to do and do more of it by the grace of God. And this is a big part of it. And God said, said He exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Look at 1 Peter 5. Please. 1 Peter 5. Oh, I saw this. I got, oh, this was so rich. So good. Lord, you, I just so many reasons to hug your neck. 1 Peter chapter 5. Look with me at verse number... Let's look at verse number 5, first of all. 1 Peter 5, 5. Just the principle of subjecting yourself to others. 
First Peter 5, 5. Likewise, you younger, submit, submit, submit yourselves. Oh, without that submission, there's oh, we gotta have that. It goes to hand in hand with humility. He says, Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be what? Subject one to another. Submitting yourselves one to another. Not thinking you're better than another. Look not every man on his own, own things, but every man also on the things of others. Amen. He says in Philippians chapter 2. Yea, all of you be subject one to another. For God resisteth. Uh-oh. You mean that's the only other option I've got? Is he to do that or God considers me the proud? Yeah, that's the only other option, folks. And God says, if you want to live in that proud life, I will resist you. But look what he says. He says, yea, all of you be subject from one to another. Be clothed, be clothed with what? Be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud. Study that word resisted. And it, it's, it's like, a, it, it's like a, a military unit coming against an enemy uh, with, with, with an a intention to overthrow. I studied that word and I thought, God, you could do that to me. <laughs> yeah, the old man. If it, but he, he, does, he hates pride, folks. You ever read that in the Word of God? He can't stand pride. The Bible says he can't even stand the love of pride. And we can carry ourselves in a proud manner to where we look proud, can't we? But it says here, for God resisteth the humble. Now listen to this. And, and get here. This is one or two places where he says this. And giveth grace to the humble. But now here's what I want you to say. Verse 6. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God. And what does it say he'll do? Exalt. That he may exalt you. He said he exalted the Lord Jesus Christ and gave him a name which is above all names. Did you know that God today, as he seeks to conform you to the image of Christ, he wants to exalt you? He wants to exalt you among the brethren. He wants you to be a source of his life among the brethren. He can use you in such a great way as a servant. As a humble servant. He can, folks, you just don't understand. I, I think some of you do. Maybe all of you do. There's so many Christian people that need you. They need what you know about that book. They need to know how you got to the level of victory that you are living right now. Folks, there's people that are struggling, that are crying, that I deal with it. some of them, thank God, uh, uh, it, every week or two. And I'm thinking, how, how, did, how, come you, how could you be that weak? You just told me you've been saved 23 years. And it, I, when, you know what? I'm not criticizing. I want to cry. I've asked the Lord to give me more tears because in times like that, my heart weeps. And I, I just would love to cry. Because it breaks my heart that much. And I think because I lived that way for so long, I identify with it. And I know what a miserable wretch. I mean, I was in church every time the doors open. I went on visitation. I went, I, uh, I love them. I love to help them. Okay, so he says here, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. Being confident of this very thing, that He which hath begun a good work in you will do what? Will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And did you see right there? This is part of His performing it. It's exalting you! But you need these four manifestations in your life if you plan to be conformed to the image of Christ. And if you want... At the end of those manifestations, what did God say He did? He exalted Jesus Christ and gave Him a name. Father, in Jesus' precious name, oh dear God, please seal these truths in our heart. Burn these truths into our souls. Lord, we want to be, I know these folk, they want to be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we trust You, Father. You said that if we would humble ourselves, You would give us the grace 
And Father, grace is the key that unlocks all the divine resources that we might be fully partakers of the nature of God. We'll have the ninefold manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit manifest in our life abundantly. We'll be a sweet smelling savor of the Lord Jesus Christ. We will be a light to the lost. Father Lord, Father Lord, we're trusting you to seal these truths to our heart and help us this coming week. Would you bring them back to us? Bring them back to us. Help us to chew on them, meditate on them, and apply them. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. Hit the bell, Rich. Mm-hmm.